<laughs> Wait, so okay, I want to I want to get into a little bit of your background. So, firstly, I need to know this because you are really friends with little Dicky, correct? Yep, that's okay. my brother. That's your boy. Yep. So, how did you guys become friends? Like, how did you link up with him? Well, honestly, I'm going to just give you the breakdown. So, I've been in the industry for a long time chasing my dreams. Mm -hmm. I started off working with Tiger. He a rapper, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh he had a manager named Anthony Martini, so I knew him. And then when I stopped the whole Tiger thing, stopped working with him, Anthony Martini hit me up one day and was like, yo, I got this new Jewish rapper. He corny. He hasn't done a first concert yet, but all that energy you got, all that swag you got, I want you to go just give it to him. Just go link up with him and see, see what <laughs> like, you think. That's so, so that's how I met Lil Dicky. And the first time I met him, I met him in an office in Santa Monica, California. I wiggled in there with a fake personal assistant. I wiggled in. <laughs> listen, listen to, listen to, this is some cold game right here. I had a fake cameraman, and you know what I'm saying? Because I've been around real stars, you know, like all my life I've been around stars like Lil Wayne when I was young, you know, I've been around Tiger, Katy Perry, Travis McCoy, Fall Out Boy. So I just always knew what it takes to feel like and look like a star. So when I met Dickie, he didn't like me at first. He like, who the hell is this guy? Who he think he is? Like, how he got an assistant? How he, like, what is he doing? How is he saying what's up to all these people in the office? Because I've been in the industry already. And yeah. that's just how our friendship just started right there at that moment. Opposites attract. He white. On his saving that money. And me, I'm just trying to be a star, feel good, and make people <laughs> yeah. hype all the time. So that's how we meshed. That's dope. That's cool, though, because I feel like there are a lot of people, especially in your position, who have maybe been around the industry already before you had met him, who like to be like gatekeepers or like to kind of be like, you know, like to kind of hold people back. And it already sounds to me like you made that connection and you just amplified each other. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We turned each other up for sure because, number one, we from different backgrounds. Yeah. Like, he taught me a bunch of things that I wouldn't even think about trying to do, like, number one. Be patient when you're working on your craft. You know what I'm saying? You don't always got to be working and putting stuff out all the time. You can really just sit back and be patient and, you know, let the work speak for itself and then create something else over time. But he taught me a lot, man. Patience, financial discipline, saving bread, all type of stuff. And then I show him how to be hungry but not thirsty. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> exactly. There's a big gambling. difference. And people don't I, – I talk about that all the time. It's like people don't understand the difference between hungry and thirsty. You know, some people are – are out there being thirsty, thinking that they're like, well, I'm just trying to make it. And it's like, no, but you're doing the most, you know? Exactly. And there's there's a fine, like a fine line. And you know what I think is funny? It's like your energy is a lot like it's my energy. Like you you gotta understand. Like, let me just tell you a story, okay? I I was working with some big people in the studio uh -huh. and some friends, and they were all going to see the hangover. This is years mm -hmm. ago, okay? They're like, movie. they're like, Chanel, come with us. It was like Chris Brown, like Bow Wow. Like it was like a bunch of people. They're mm -hmm. like, we're all going to see The Hangover. Come with us. And I heard Snoop was going to be in the next studio over. And I had mm. never met Snoop. Like right. my name is Chanel West Coast. My, yeah. old, my old dog growing up, his name was Snoop. Oh, wow. I was like, I got to meet Snoop. Yeah, so I'm wild. like, you guys go, go to the movies. I'm going to stay back. I'm going to kick it. Let me just tell you, long story short, I love Snoop. He's my homie. We're cool now. <laughs> but... Long story short, I got a little too lit and I got into an argument with Snoop in the studio. Oh, wow. Which started because I was just trying to hype myself. But maybe mm -hmm. in that moment, I think now that I look back, I might have been a little too thirsty. I thought I was being hungry, you know? Yeah. And that was a, a experience for me where I really learned how, how to navigate, you know? But yeah. um, it's funny, though, because, like, I just came in with this crazy energy and I that's how it started. I literally was like, man, that girl's whack. I was like, you should, I was like she's whack as fuck. I was like, you should rap on a song with me. And then Snoop got mad at me because he was like, how are you going to diss her? I'm on a song with her. He mm -hmm. was like, now you're calling me whack. And uh, I was like, no, 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 no. You're Snoop Dogg. I was like, I'm not calling you whack. Like anything this girl does doesn't touch what you're doing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, that's, that's the thing these days. Like, you know, once you get mature and stuff, you start realizing respect is everything. Yep. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you probably was doper than her. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day... You gotta respect that she made the move first. Yep. Even yeah. if it's trash or not. You yep. know what I'm saying? So yeah. and that's I did, how it be. I didn't know that at the time, you yeah. know, but like I always had that energy. Like I've always been like, I just I'm not scared to speak up, you know. Yeah, like yeah, I'll yeah. get in I'll get in the room with somebody. Like that's how I got a song with French Montana. I, yeah, that's, I that's how I am. I'm the same exact way, but it's a time and a place for everything. You gotta read the room. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. Well, I got better at that after yeah. the after that situation. That was pretty much like a very big learning experience for me. Like after that, I kind of like I knew at that point, like, okay. You gotta just play your cards a little, play your cards a little better. Yeah, so my, my 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 key to wiggling around celebrities was, yeah, you the celebrity, but I feel cooler than you, and I'ma just do this 
and make you feel like, all right, who is this guy? But just not even saying nothing to you. Yeah. Right. Like when I get around celebrities, ninety percent of the time they speak to me first, mm -hmm. just because of the way I carry myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I might have a girl with me, and they might be thinking, damn, how his girl look better than the girl I came with. <laughs> right, like right. how he got security and an assistant and cameraman, or why he got on the latest fashion and why. Like I just, yeah. you got to be mysterious first when you mm -hmm. get around celebs, you know, because they gonna figure you out because they see everybody trying to. Oh, so you're you giving, know. he's giving game out right yeah. now. No, no, yeah. I mean, it was, it was, yeah. I had to learn, you know, like I got thrust into, I've been working on music and, and hustling my way in the music game for a long time, but like, thank you. You gotta <laughs> give it up for that. Thank you. <laughs> a lot of people quit. No, I I don't quit. And I think people are starting to realize that. They're like, damn, this bitch does not stop, you know? Um, yeah, that's for real. But I, I started by doing music and, you know, I was navigating my way through that. And then I ended up meeting Rob Deerdeck. Mm -hmm. I got on his show. And what's crazy is like in the first two weeks of filming for Fantasy Factory, he's like, okay, Ludacris is about to come in and I'm gonna need you to rap to Ludacris when he comes in. I was like, wait, what? I What? Just freestyle? Like, da -da -da. And so... I got thrust into being around these really big celebrities, like really fast. And so that's why I think a situation like what happened with Snoop happened, because I was like, I was just like thrust into this shit so right, quick. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was like, sure. I don't even know how to. Yeah, you've been out here 10 toes down. Yeah, like I was like, whoa, like this is like, you know, I just gotta, I just gotta be, I'm one of them, you know? Yeah. And, um, but I think that that's something that you're great at. Like, I love, I love your energy and how you just, you know, even watching you on the show, which I know it's acting, but I know yeah. it's meant to portray like sure. you guys in real life. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just love how you have that energy and you just like. And then also back to what you were saying, remember too, like you didn't do nothing wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with being confident, but sometimes it's just a time and a place for everything. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. my acting like you and having that confidence and like, man, that's how I got to be who I am today too. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's just a time and a place. No, nah, but you had a great point though. And we were talking about this on the last pod of just how you carry yourself and just having that like energy when you walk into a room still has value, even though we're in such a digital age nowadays, yeah. like people can still recognize like star energy when it enters the room, yeah. even if you, they don't know who you are. Exactly. And I feel like that's how you can attract things to you. And I feel like that's like a real balance also of like, how do I go after things, but also how do I attract things? Because sometimes you need to attract it instead yep. of going and getting it. Exactly, and that's, yeah. and that's, what, I, what, I mean? that's what I love about um, Dave the most, Lil Dicky. Uh, he taught me like, bro, you don't always have to be chasing it. You can just go outside and walk your dog, you know, and just be a normal person, just breathe mm -hmm. and take time to be re-inspired. And that really helped me because it's a constant battle every day when you're grinding every day, trying to make it to the top. You know, yeah, I was about to say, it, being it, from... so, it sounds like I needed Dave as a friend myself because yeah. it, it took it took me a long time to like, you know, and I think it's just like when you come from nothing and you're really like, let's be honest, Dave, you know, he's comes from a little, he got a nice hey, family. Come on, like, that you know what I mean? Man. Hey, I'm <laughs> yeah. Like he had bar mitzvah money. Like Yo, I'm like, you know. Then he got a hundred thousand from the fans Kickstarter. <laughs> hey, ain't no fans gave me nothing. No, but like <laughs> real. I feel you though, because I used to have this like every day, like I'd wake up like, what can I do today to get to that next level? Like I gotta get it, gotta get it. Like almost stressing myself out, you know? And I had to teach myself, like, same thing. Like, you know, I had a baby now. That chilled me out. Congrats to that. More life to you. Let's go. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. That chilled me out a lot. And that made me realize, like, yo, like, there is more to life. And sometimes when you're not so obsessed over something, mm -hmm. it kind of just comes to you. Yeah, you know what I mean? 